Okay. So first things first, we are going to start in lesson 14. Of the two lessons that are today, lesson 14 will be on your test. Not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. So you're going to want to know how to do lesson 14. Lesson 14 is extremely easy. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. When y equals a number and graphing x equals a number. And you can put those right next to each other. So when y equals a number and when x equals a number. When y equals a number, it will be a horizontal line. Do you need paper, Andrew? Oh. It will be a horizontal line. Horizontal is a line that goes directly left and right. Graphing x equals a number. Anybody want to take a wild guess? This is a horizontal line. What do we think that one's going to be? Vertical. Vertical line. Which is up and down. And I'm going to explain why right here. Here we go. So here's our example. It's going to say graph y equals negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I want to put I want to put a point where y equals negative 2. Will I go up? Will I go left? Will I go right? Will I go down to find where y equals negative 2? Remember, this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. So which direction do I need to go to put one point where it's y equals negative 2? Good. Down on the y-axis. Down on the y-axis. Y equaling negative 2 is right there. It says that we're going through y equals. That's my graph. Does anybody see an x in this equation? So it will not cross my x-axis. If there is no x, it will never cross the x-axis. If there is no x, it will not cross the x-axis, which is why it's a horizontal line. That makes sense? Okay. So let's do the opposite here. So if I've got, we're going to graph again, x equals positive 2. Here's my x-axis. Here's my y. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 3, 1, 2, 3. If I want to place one point at x equaling 2, am I going to go up, down, left, or right? Let's get somebody other than Jay, but I want to put one point where X is two. What do you think, Tyler? Um, the... Do I want to go up on this axis, left on this, down, or right? Right. Right. I go over one, two. That's where X is two. Do you see a Y in X equals two? So guess what it can't cross? The Y. The Y axis, which is why it's vertical. That's lesson 14, plain and simple. Questions? Everybody with me? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay. Good. So now we're open to page S. I'd like you to go to S74. We will jump there in a second. But just have it open. Set it off to the side because now we're going to get into our nitty gritty stuff. Okay? Be careful where you step over that pole. Okay? This is an easy er lesson. My first and third hour crushed it. I truly crushed it. Put your mask on, Andrew. Okay? They crushed it. I think you guys can do the same because here's my first question. Nope, sit down. You're not throwing that away. Who can count? Truly and honestly, like I'm, I'm being serious. Who can count? Who can count? One, two, three, four, five, six. If you can count, you can do this lesson. Plain and simple, you can do this lesson. Miss Tucker, who's not good at math, is nodding her head because she's like, wow, I picked this up. It was really easy. 
You know why? Because it, it is. Put off this. So this is lesson 15. Lesson 15 is talking about slope. Okay? Lesson 15 is talking about slope. The easiest definition that we come up with for slope, just in case you decide to So the easiest definition for slope is the steepness of a line. Okay, the steepness of a line. So, does this line right here go up or down? No, neither. neither. Okay? This is a little steep. I wouldn't mind walking up this hill. If I was hiking, this would be a nice hill to walk up. Okay, now it's getting a little bit tougher. It's pretty steep. It's kind of aggravating. I need, like, rock climbing gear. This is almost impossible to climb. Same thing. I don't like falling down this hill. Like, I'm not going to go too far. I can stop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I have broken bones. I'm getting hurt. The rocks have come after me. Steepness. How much up and down the line is. Okay? Now, more so than anything else, slope is a constant. More than anything else, slope is a constant. What does it mean if something is constant? Javen. It stays the same. That means that from here to here is the same as from here to here, as the same as from here to here, as the same as from here to here, and so on and so forth. It doesn't go from here to here, and then all of a sudden the line drops down here. I'm not having this funky shaped line. I'm going to have a nice straight line because a slope is constant. Well, how do we find a slope? I'm glad you asked. Slope, which we are going to have as a variable. Slope's variable is m. Why, you ask? I have no idea. I don't. I'm sure I could look it up and find out, but I don't know right now. But I do know that you're going to see when it talks about slope, it's going to be the letter M. Slope is found by counting. And we count the rise divided by the run. And copy it down, please. Rise divided by run. Slope is a fraction. Okay, we need to make sure we understand that. Slope is a fraction. When we count the rise, we can count one of two directions. We can count up or we can count down. So the first thing that we're going to count is rise, which is up or down. And then we're going to count the run, which is left or right. But for our class, to make it easier, you're going to count up or down. I only want you to count to the right. Just to take away some of the stuff for us, rise is up and down. Run will always be to the right. You're going to want to get out a piece of paper and open up page S74 in your um, okay. okay, everybody still with me? There are four different kinds of slopes. We are going to focus on two of them today. Okay, we're going to focus on two of them. But before we get to that, I'm going to make some general statements that you're going to be like, why am I writing this down? Because there's a method to my madness. Trenton, you've had me for two years. 
I can act silly, I can be crazy. But usually even if I'm crazy, it leads into something else, right? You gotta trust me a little bit. So the first statement is we read left to right. So the first thing that we need to know is we read from the left to the right. I don't look at this statement and say, right to left to read we. We don't do that. We truly look from the top of our paper and we look to the left and that's how we read. So I say that to get to this. We look at graphs from left to right. That is important. Okay, so everything about today's lesson is from the left to the right. For something to have positive slope, we're going to say the line goes uphill from left to right. Gentlemen on the computer, are you able to see in here? You're still good? Okay. So the line goes uphill from left to right. So here's my example. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Put a point here, put a point here. You should be able to look at this graph and pretend that you have a ball. So I'm going to grab one of my balls here. I'm going to grab my soccer ball. I'm going to place it on the left side of my graph because we look at it from left to right. For me to move the ball from left to right, which way do I need to go? Which way is that ball rolling? It's going uphill. As soon as my ball is rolling uphill, we know that the slope has to be what? Positive. Positive. So negative. Hmm. I'm going to move this a little bit. So a negative slope is the exact opposite. So a negative slope says the line goes which way? Down. Downhill. From left to right. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Once again, I can take my ball. I can start it on the left side of my line, always. And if I follow that line, what's my ball doing? It's rolling downhill. If my ball rolls downhill, we can immediately say that the slope is negative. Okay, go ahead and copy those. this one. Okay, I'm going to put back up here slope, which we know is M equals rise divided by a run. Does everybody have written down the negative slope? Yes, have not gone too fast. Okay.
Okay, so numbers one and two are very, very easy. Or at least I think they are. Take a look at number one, take a look at number two. It's asking you to find the slope. That's the slope. So just taking a look at them, are they going to be positive or negative and why? So take a look at number one and tell me, what do you think, Juliana? Negative. Why is it negative? Why does number one have to be negative? From, from left to right, it goes downhill. Is that hard? Okay. Number two, Ava. Why? From left to right, it goes uphill. Questions? Okay. So, Mr. H, why do you have the words rise divided by run written? Well, now we're actually trying to find the given slope. Andrew, please keep your mask on. So, the first thing I'm going to always start with is putting m equals a fraction. Because I want you to get into the habit of knowing that slope is rise divided by run, which is a fraction. Knowing it's a fraction is going to help us in the long run. Okay. This line is giving us two points. I'm going to highlight those two points so that we can see them. Everybody with me still? Immediately looking at this, is my slope positive or negative? Abs. Positive. Positive, because it's going uphill. So my fraction stays positive. Okay. So now this is where rise over run comes in. I want to make a triangle between my two points. And I always move my triangle up or down first. Then I do my left or right. Because remember, rise over run, we're going up or down and then to the right. So I've made my triangle. Here's how I like to think about this. There's a little man chilling down here at this point. And he's got to climb. He's got to get from this point to this point. How many up does my man have to climb? Just one. He has to climb from zero to one. So the rise is one. So now he's climbed. He's triumphant. His arms are in the air. Yay! And he's up there. He's, he's happy, except his goal's over here. How many does he have to run? Tyler. One. He only has to run one. So the slope is 1 divided by 1. Can I simplify that fraction? Certainly. What is 1 divided by 1? 1. Is this answer wrong? No. That's probably what you're going to see a lot of. Get in the habit of writing it as a fraction. Promise you it's going to pay dividends. Okay? So there's my slope. But what does that mean? Remember how I said slope is a constant? Watch this. From this point, if I go up 1, oh, oh my gosh, it's still on the line. Wait a minute. Let's go down here. Up one, over. Oh, my gosh. Up one. All of these are staying exactly the same because slope is constant. If I give you one point and tell you the slope is one, you should be able to make all the other points of the graph. And that's what we're going to end up doing. Okay, that one's nice. Let's try another one. I do not like number four, Sam I am, so we're not going to do it. I do not like number five, Sam I am, so guess what? We're not going to do it. I do not like six, Sam I am. I do not like seven, Sam I am. But I do like eight. Oh, hello, number eight. Do we have two points? Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to highlight them. I've got this point on the line. I've got this point on the line. Who remembers what I said was the first thing I should do? If I'm looking for slope, I should do what first? Fraction. Yeah, make it a fraction. Put m equals some kind of fraction. Then, after you've done that, you need to look at the line and say, self, is it positive, is it negative? Dustin, is this line positive or negative? Because it's going down. Yeah, it's going downhill from left to right, which means I need a negative sign. And I have people say, Mr. H, does it matter where the negative sign is? Nope. As long as you have one negative, 
So am I going to make my triangle go up first or down first? Ava, down. So now my triangle's this way and to the right. Everybody with me? Okay, my little man's up here. Let's count. He's got to climb one rung, two, three, four, five. So it's down five, and then he's got to run one. So the slope is negative five divided by one. Can you simplify that slope? Yeah. Yeah, what does it simplify to? Negative one. What? Negative five. Negative five, because negative five divided by one is negative five. Is this hard? Remember when I said if you can count, you can do this? Okay. You are doing now numbers 9, 10, 11, and 12 on your own. Do 9, 10, 11, and 12. So hands, you're still working. Okay, you have one more minute. Dustin Braden, you guys doing all right? Cool. Just so you know, if I ever say something like that again, where I'm like, cool, and I try to act young, just be like, just shake your head and say, Mr. H, no, stop it. You're old and we're crazy and weird. You just can't see it because I'm all covered up. Okay, here we go. So number nine. Who wants to walk me through this? Faith, go ahead. What's my first step? Yep, M equals make it a fraction. Is it positive or negative? Good. How many am I going to count up? Good. How many am I going to run? Air five. Well, then, I'm sorry, I just air five you in the face. I apologize. That's me wiping away from the face. You're good. Questions on number one. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Anybody find this hard yet? Okay. There's going to be one that we're going to do that's a little bit trickier. Okay, number 11. No, it's not. Number 10 comes next, Mr. H. Okay. Uh, Juliana, what do I do? Make a fraction. M equals a fraction. Is it positive or negative? negative. So I put a negative. Okay, how many down? 
So there's my rise. Even though we're going down, rise is up or down, so it's negative two. What's my run? Error five. She gave me an error five. Thing. Questions there. Okay, number 11. Ah. Okay, Trenton, you're on. What do I do? Make a fraction. Make a fraction. Positive or negative? Positive. What's my slope? Two. Guys, this, this, it's not, you wish this was on your test. Like, you should wish that this was on the test because it's pretty easy, right? This is not on your mid-module test. It'll be on your end of module. Okay, last but not least, number 12. Go ahead, Abs. Okay, positive, negative. Positive. Then? Then you find out how many you've got. Okay, how many? Two, three, four, five, over one. Woohoo! Questions. Okay. Take a look at 13. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Find the slope of number 13. But be careful. I'm telling you that there's a trick. You're going to be tricked. There is a trick. You will be tricked. Be careful. Okay, walk me through it, Javen. Make a fraction. Is it positive or negative? Okay, how many up am I going? Three. Does everybody agree that we're going up three? Ab says no, Javen. Here's what I'll say. I agree that your little man is jumping three blocks. But what is each block worth? Oh, so you need to look at this y-axis to see what those little blocks are worth. Now listen, nine times out of 10, actually I'll say 99 times out of 100, they'll be one. You won't see by halves very often. But if Engage New York is throwing you it by halves, we should know. So if it's going up by a half, a half, one, one and a half. So my rise is one and five tenths. My run is over one half, one. Okay, everybody with me? Do you see where you made your mistake? Now, Javen, did you get m equals three divided by two? Yeah. Put in your calculator, kiddos, three divided by two. I, I know, it's fine. What'd you get? Wait a minute, you got the same thing? Yeah. It's still going to be the same thing. Okay, because 3 divided by 2, we went up the 3 boxes over 2. Even though it's by halves, it's the same. Rise divided by run. Questions. You have a test, not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Next Tuesday, you get your review guide. For some of you, it will take you all class. For others, it will take you 15 minutes, okay? Then you have your Illuminate test on Thursday. Then you come back in the following Tuesday. Andrew, put your head up. Questions. You will have two videos in your Google Classroom, both live videos, one from last Wednesday, one from today. I would suggest watching, especially last Wednesdays. Yes? Wunderbar. You guys may put your calculators back. I need to stop the recording. Gentlemen, you guys have a good day, and...